Um, welcome. This is a great show. Um, as far as how many people have come out this morning, it's early. Uh, there's no such thing as a free breakfast, so you do have homework today. But it's all about you guys getting some value and going straight back into your businesses and applying some of this. So this is, I'm going to take you through exactly my strategy. My approach to business is not to give advice, it's to experience share. So this is what I actually use across all my businesses and the formula that I've spent five years working on and refining to get it right. So I'm a huge fan of small business. Um, obviously, with all the stuff that I've been doing with Entrepreneurs Organisation and Young Presidents Organisation, um, and I just really want us guys to win. So, um, are we up for that game? Sounds good. So, I will be calling on some of you for some help today. So, I just want to acknowledge first Techwell for putting this on. Um, I think it's... Uh, I can't speak highly enough for their team. They're really amazing at what they do. But for tech people and me being a creative, I usually don't get along well with the other side of the brain. Um, I don't really understand that. And being able to partner with guys like this so that I can just, as a business person, I'm a problem solver, right? We're all problem solvers. Tech is a bit of a hurdle for me. I'm like, keep up with me. I want to make sure it's working. I want to make sure that it's relevant for my business. And not only that, that it increases my productivity and my efficiency for my team. So a lot of my businesses started off at under half a mil and have gone to over 10 mil in less than two years. So you can imagine how tech needs to evolve in that time. So these guys are not only great at tech, but they're actually as passionate about small business as I am. And the fact that they're putting this on so that there is a hub for you guys to come and get access to some really valuable learnings, um, I think is really commendable. So um, thank you guys for having us today. All right. So that is um, basically my approach to everything. I'm the creative, and on the other side is all the tech. And luckily, I met Monty about six years ago. Now, Monty, if you don't know, is actually globally known as the Google guru. Uh, he's from, he has an American accent, but he calls himself Australian now. He actually used to work at NASA, which is, he's a rocket scientist. So what's really good for me is I focus on the creative and then we look at the algorithms. So marketing isn't fluff, right? A lot of people who, have we got marketing managers in the room? Anyone? Do we have marketing managers in our businesses? Can I? Yeah, great. So the thing that I find with marketing is a lot of people think it's a bit of a crystal ball, but it's not. I'm extremely analytical and there's a process that we need to follow. So if we put this process in place, there, there is no crystal ball. It's very simple. So I'm going to take you through how I managed to merge both sides of my brain. A little bit about myself, um, 20 years with a marketing agency. I called it a midlife crisis in business about five years ago. Was spending a lot of time building other people's brands um, and uh, decided I would go out on my own and uh, start creating my own products and businesses that I had equity in as opposed to fee-for-service. So my passion is wellness, so I have a range of uh, vegan, organic, cruelty-free products um, that are Australian and uh, Australian brands, but I take those to America. Um, quite a large market there, obviously, with California being 40 million people, so um, I currently commute to America every month. So two weeks on, two weeks off for the next three months, I believe. So that's sort of my mandate. And um, anyone who participates, I do have bribery gifts. So. so set the intention for today. This is what I want to show you. By the end of the hour, I want to show you how for two hours a month, you can create over 200 pieces of quality content online. Now, the biggest excuse I get from small business when I ask them, why aren't you doing stuff online, is they say, my marketing manager's too busy, I don't have a marketing manager, or I don't get around to it. And frankly, that's not a good enough excuse because you can't not afford to be doing online. It's as simple as that. And some people say, well, I'm in the mining industry, it's not relevant. Well, procurement managers do most of their due diligence online and it's good if you can be found because they probably will never meet you in person. So it's relevant for everybody, both products and services-based businesses. Um, and time is no longer an objection. So I'm going to show you how, in a very short amount of time, you can create that. And why it's important is because we want to be able to generate leads online that are low or no cost. So does anyone do Facebook ads and Google ads currently? Yep, great. 
have you noticed how it's costing you almost double for your cost per clicks and acquisition costs at the moment? 171% Facebook has gone up in the last six months. Now, that's pretty hard to compete with. So I want to show you an organic strategy today so that you can put that into the mix. All right, does it sound like a plan? Great. Now, um, I want to make sure that it's relevant for everyone in the room. I'm certainly not a professional speaker. I kind of just make it up as I'm going and give you experience shares. So who are product-based businesses? Who sell products in the, in, in the room? Okay, and the rest are services? Great. Right, so I'll give a mix. It looks like about 50-50. I'll give a mix of both examples. All right, so this is why you should care. 75% of people across the world admit to gauging a business online before they even go into a shop. So if you have a physical retail outlet, just remember that 75% are going to do some sort of due diligence before they even walk in. So you need to be found. And what are you saying, Monty, about Google if they put dead bodies on the second page of Google? Then for the product people in the room, four out of 10 people will actually check out your reviews before they buy a product. So homework number one, I'm the master of delegation after 20 years in business, is what is your review strategy? How are you ranking and are you measuring that week on? Every week I'm having a look at where I'm at. I actually pay my team to solicit reviews because of that important factor, because that's almost half of people. So that's why that's important. Now, down the bottom, we've got business to business and business to consumer. Now, if you have a look at those two, everyone is fighting over this pay-per-click, the orange section, right? And that's the bit that's going up. And then we obviously have social media marketing, which is your Facebook, your Instagram ads, that sort of thing. But everyone is not thinking about the other side, which is the blue. What's interesting is that social media has evolved, but human behavior has not changed. We all do the same thing. We go, yeah, paid, paid. A lot of people still click on the organic. And that is where I see the opportunity for small business. That 57% if you're a business to business and the 41% if you're a B to C. So the reason I'm playing in the blue space, I mean, I do a bit mix of all of them. The reason I'm focusing so much on the blue today is because we had our chance, basically. For so long, no, none of the big guys, the big competitors were doing paid media because they didn't understand it. They, they had uh, no boundaries and rules. They couldn't control it. So how do they manage their staff with all of this? And it was a little bit overwhelming for them. So for a long time, I mean, I had a good, what, seven year run, didn't I? Where I could own that space because the big guys weren't playing there. The unfortunate bit is that now they are. So a recent survey said that everyone this year, the major big brands, are tripling their online budget. So that's why our cost per click is going up, is because it's all supply and demand. And you also remember last year, remember Facebook announced, there's too many ads in the feeds, we're going to you know, cut the amount of ads that you see. All that means is that it becomes a bidding war, and now those scarcity of amounts that it does show up you have to bid for that and try and get in there, which makes it so much more expensive. So the issue with that is that we can't compete against the majors, right? We never have been able to. But what small business always wins at is we are agile and we are quick to market and we are flexible. We can change our strategy straight away. And none of them are doing organic because, again, that scares them and they don't know how to. They don't know how to create value propositions and have a conversation online and all that sort of stuff. So that is what I'm suggesting for yourselves, is let's win at the organic, which is a free click, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So just so that you understand how I work, I'm a numbers person. I like to build and sell businesses. So this is very relevant for me, is I actually track myself against the averages of the charts. So on the right there is actually my average across all my businesses. So 47% of my leads are coming via organic source. And then I've got a mix of paid social and paid click, which is Monty takes care of all of that for me, which is great. Um, so the online for Google. And there's a few strategies there that uh, you can win at as well. So are you measuring yourself? Where is all your, all your leads coming from? and your conversions, and do they fit the norms of the behaviours of people online? 
Does that make sense? Cool. Too many stats, they're saying. I thought you were a creative. Um, okay, so this is, um, you know, the cost per click. Uh, it's, it's definitely going up. Um, double, triple in some cases, and that was probably about four months ago, so it's probably even more now. So I don't want to harp on too much about it, but it's, it's bloody expensive. Um, so this is what I call my trifecta. So we all want to have a trifecta, and this is what this series is about, is to take you through each section so that you have the tools to be able to do this in business really easily. So the thing that I'm going to focus on is the, the um, earned media. So this is, this is really important. This is the organic stuff. So we know about paid, and the next series is about paid, and we're going to be talking in the next, because these are every quarter, the next quarter we're going to be talking about your paid and how we get the cost down of that and some strategies for getting that cost down. But today we're going to talk about where is the organic and how are we going to do that. So your owned media is all your on-page stuff. So your website, your blog, all the things that you have. I'm talking about off-page, which is all your social media, all the other things that you do. So put your hands up, anyone who has more than three social media channels. So Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Anyone got any more than three channels that they're running actively, not posted three years ago? I can't stand that when you see someone's news blog and it's great. It's the one. That, that's concerning. You get a prize. <laughs> you look like a chocolate man. <laughs> there you go. Um, that's concerning. Uh, because you need a minimum of six channels to rank organically. And I know that sounds like bloody hell, we're small business, we've got enough to do, right? Another three things you want me to do? Don't worry, there's a solution coming. I, uh, I get eight hours sleep a night, so you're fine. Um, so you do need more than three. You need to have a minimum of six. So I'll take you through that. So sales funnel, we're all across this, right? We all know what a sales funnel looks like. This is all about leads. So exactly the same way as a sales funnel will work with humans, we're looking at how it will work with um, our paid. Would it help if I sent everyone the slides afterwards? Great. Okay, cool. Cool. That's all right. Just so we've got your attention, you know, otherwise I might pick on you and take off, take that back. Um, okay, so top of the funnel. So question for you. They're all the things that are paid, that you have to fork out money for. Which do you think is the most expensive out of the ones that are highlighted and the ones that are in italic? SEO, yep, that's up there, but not when you use my little guy over here. Um, no, not that one. Which one in general? So as a whole, the ones that are highlighted or the ones that are italic? Which one's more expensive? A strategy. So it's actually the italic. Why do you think that is? What's the most expensive thing in our business, people? I go to America. Do you know what they pay per hour versus us? Holy dooly. And our holidays and everything else. Our labour is the most expensive thing in our business. So that is the stuff that you want to work on and get as lean as possible. In fact, I rarely do it unless I can see a return on investment. So we're at an expo um, which has 85,000 people coming to it in LA in a couple of um, weeks, a food expo, and I have a KPI for my team. There's six on the ground. I haven't told you this yet. This is your KPI. Um, of $10,000 worth of orders a day. So 60 grand a day across three days just to be able to justify that. So that's a big ask, right? So we've got to be able to get our return on investment for these things. So those things, I work really hard at making sure that they're, they're efficient and that they're lean and that they're driven by scorecards and a shitload of accountability, right? So that's, that's that. The other stuff is the paid stuff that we talked about. PR, I think, is a little bit of black magic. Not really sure how that works. Has anyone forked out money for PR and closed their eyes and hope to hell something comes of it? I'm not a huge fan of it. I think it's more relevant if you're going for awards or looking for an exit and you want to be, be seen. Um, so I won't harp on about that. So the things that we're going to focus on is the green. So see how we've just doubled the amount of activity that's coming into our funnel. So this is all just the same stuff, right, guys? You know that activity equals outcome. It's all we're trying to do is get the activity up. So the one thing else that I, oh gosh, I'm really 
no idea how to drive this. One thing that I wanted to point out was at the top of the funnel, 90% value add, 10% suggestive sale. How many people get spooked when somebody comes in and um, on the first date, they're saying, do you want to get married? Right? If you, you tell your sales te team to go in, and if you do this sales-wise online, if you go in with the intention of only adding value and 10% suggestive sale, you might get to a second date. Dating, sex, marriage, right? Keep it, keep it simple. All right, so this is what we came up with. It's called the EAT strategy. This is very simple. Everything that you do online needs to follow this. You need to position yourselves as the experts, that you're the authority when it comes to this subject matter, and that you're trusted. Okay, that's all we need to do. And we want to create content that is narrow in topic and deep in scope. So I'm gonna give you an example. How many times have you seen a corporate video that probably costs them $5,000 or $10,000, and it is, the whole history of the company. We started back in such and such and we've now grown to this big and we have the reach of this many people and 20 stores. It goes on and on and on, right? And it's probably got about 50 views, 30 of them are their family, and it cost them five grand, right? Now, would you say that me rambling on about myself and all that stuff, is that 90% value add? It's 90% me. Uh, the poor person on the other end is just going, well, this is, I don't even know you, but already you're proposing because you, you're really telling me how great you are. So, and the other thing that's really important, which this genius here taught me, is that the Google bot doesn't actually know how to index that. It goes, oh, years, uh, stores, t 20, all right, now they're talking about 20,000 products that they do. You know how everyone goes into, oh, we do web design, but we also do SEO, and we can design your brochures, and blah, 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 and they keep going. It, it has no idea how to index that. So effectively, the bot, which is how Google works to rank you, it goes over that content and says, confused, and it basically passes it on. So what we want to do is give the bot content that is deep and narrow. So let's, let's pick on someone in a good way. All right. Where are you from? Pardon? Picture Warehouse. Oh, that's wonderful. Last time I got like a safety cement guard person and I, that was an interesting one. <laughs> that's much nicer. So, um, so tell me what you specialize in. Okay, um, wall, wall art. Hanging? Yeah. Okay, great. So she does picture framing, right? So. A example of what not to do would be, we've been in business for 10 years. We have over a thousand frames. Some of the frames that you can get is this, 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 and this. We do these sizes, we do glass, we do reflective, we do non-reflective, and we can hang it at your home if you like. Our range of prices start from $10 and go up to 10,000. We take about three weeks to do it, unless you buy it online, right? That's a ramble. Bot, no. So a deep and narrow would be, the difference between reflective glass and non-reflective glass and why there's a cost difference and how that will look. So just talking about the glass, it's a deep and narrow topic and that's all we talk about for three minutes. Then if someone's looking for picture frame reflective glass, up you go. Does that make sense? So people don't just put picture frames in nowadays. You know your own behaviours, right? We really think Google's a real person and we're like, oh, we're going to tell you a story. Hey, I'm, I've got a picture, I just got married and I want it with reflective glass. So we do these long, it's called a long tail. And then Google goes, great, wedding, probably feed you something to do with that and it'll also feed yours because it's found it. And it's not only found it in one place or three places, it's found it in six. Make sense? Great. So deep and narrow. So all the content needs to leverage off your existing exp experts. So another thing that I can't stand seeing is when someone pays like someone else to talk about their business. I mean, we all know that's not real, right? And what's interesting is the stats are that people will buy from a founder or somebody who's from the business three times to one over an actor. So 
I know that a lot of people say, look, I've got a face for radio, I get it. But at the end of the day, we pay a lot of money for our team and they could talk underwater about some stuff. Like I interviewed these TechWell guys. Holy shit, did I learn a lot about MBN. I had no idea. I'll put that in the back of my head. I just delegated it after that. I'm like, you seem to know what you're doing. You can do that. But like one of them could talk specifically on how to, what, when the right timing is to put it in. Do you know what I mean? Like when is the right time? How much downtime do I need in my business? That's something that I care about. 90% value. Does that make sense? All right. So 90% value, 10% suggestive sale. I want no hard selling. Now you have some forms, which is very untechy, but um, on your uh, tables, and I want you to have a look on the other side, which is the list. So think about your payroll and think about your partners, okay? So sometimes we will um, get some of our partners to come in and be the experts. So these are people who could talk on a subject underwater, probably half drunk, they're fine. They still are the experts. So we don't want full drunk. It gets a bit messy. Um, we've tried that. Um, so we want the top five people. I want you to identify some people straight away in your business or in your circle who are experts. So for you, yours might be that you could actually get somebody who supplies your timber or, or your framing. And you could get them to just talk on, you know, um, the longevity of foil or fade resistant could just be the coating. Just how do you get a quality frame? You might get one of those and then you might also interview somebody internally who puts the frames together and it, it might demonstrate two ways to do it. This is the cheap way with the staples. This is our way and how, how we reinforce it. Okay, and, and, and why that is important for the pictures as far as keeping it in its true form. Okay, all right. So I want you to write down, is there five? Do I make you do five? Great. Okay, so we want to do five people. You can be one of them yourself too. It's okay. Awesome. What's the next question? Okay. So we could probably take this away, but what we want to do is think about some narrow topics for each of those people. So Brendan... What does Brendan do? He runs the whole business. They're a family business of three. Family business of three and he runs the whole thing. All right, so we're going to have to make him be really <laughs> narrow. This is going to be hard. Yeah, it's going to be fun. All right, so what does Brendan love the most? What's he excited about right now in the business? Sales. He just, he's, a he's a salesman, but what do you sell? Okay, so protective coatings for tiles, glass, and stainless steel. Do you think you could get Brendan to contain himself and just talk about coating in relation to glass? Awesome. Put him down for three. He's going to do coatings for glass, the three that you just said, grout and tiles. Okay? Yep, stainless, but you don't let him... Yeah, exactly. So the suggestive sale in that would be take me through the process of how it works, why it's important to, to, to do just tiles, yep. right? And the suggestive sale would be, you know, uh, if you would like to learn more about or have a question about your tile and whether it's relevant for you, give us a call and we can do an assessment. That would be a suggestive sale at the end of three minutes of talking in detail. Okay, we've all watched those videos before, right? when we're buying a Galaxy phone and we look at some tech person carry on and go, wow, they need a life. Um, but they go into so much detail, right? And they're really helpful. So, sorry, tech people, you can tell I'm creative. So that's what we want to do. So all of you, if you can fill those out. Who doesn't have five people? Okay. Rain, storm with me. What's going on? Uh, yes? It's just, me. it's just you. Yep. Great. So um, I would imagine you speak to different industries. Is that right? Yeah. Who's your target market? Uh, uh, entrepreneurs and leaders. Yep. Uh, between 30 and 45. Okay. So 
what do we, I, <laughs> I know personally what we struggle with, but you tell me what you see that we struggle with. Yep. So that's very broad. So one might be, and you know, it's kind of, as a speaker, it's kind of cool be fun, and I'm going to give this one to you for free. How to avoid being a magpie might be the topic, which is, as an entrepreneur, we love picking up shiny things. We're just constantly distracted by reinventing and picking up stuff. And you know what my business coach says to me? You shall not be magpie. You do this and you do it constantly until you get to 10 mil and then I give you permission to go and play on something else. Because we're easily distracted. So it might be that you're talking to them about distraction and relating to them as magpies and just talking about distraction, right? And I know it's just you, but that's fantastic. We want to see more of you because you are a speaker and a coach, right? The other thing that you could do is you could talk to, get some of your clients to come in and talk on a, a, a specific problem that they were having and how the suggestive sale would be and how you, what they went through, what you took them through and how they, that problem got resolved for them. Does that make sense? Great. Um, and then the other thing that you could do is talk about industries. So you could go, okay, um, we're talking about, uh, say, the retail industry. And you could just talk about how you like to go in and give examples for them on, on things that are specific for them. So you might just talk about retail, because you usually have niches within speaking that you're, you know, interested in. Does that help? Great. All right. No one else is stuck? No one's game? You get some chocolate? for you, yourself, every day. Can you catch? Let's see. Awesome, terrible throw. Okay, okay, so this is, this is gonna be our plan, right? This is our map. So we're gonna spend two hours and we're gonna pick two of the experts that are on our list and we're gonna interview them on four products, of four topics. If, if you don't wanna do that, with Techwell, there was so much in there, we basically let each person talk on one thing so you can do as many, many people as you like, but I usually pick two. So I literally have my peeps all planned out for a year. They're all identified. I usually don't tell them until about the week before. But um, so we create eight videos. So Emmett, our amazing camera guy at the back, goes in and we interview them on that, okay? For a three minute interview. And it does not hurt. You survived, didn't you boys? You're good? Yeah. You look great too. And the lighting women is fantastic. No need for Botox. It's, I don't know what he uses, but it's great. So we do the eight videos and they're all professional videos. Remember what you're putting out there? Be very careful. Because in ten, five years time, if you are a bigger business and you've got all this scrappy DIY stuff on your phone with, I've seen some where you can see the toilet in the background and the bed, it's not a good look. Especially if you're looking to be acquired, it's not, not great. Um, so if you want to demand top dollars, portray that. 97% of perception becomes reality. It's terrible. That's how vain we are. So we get a perception and we go, okay, these guys are professional. They look the part. You know, we want to see some quality homes. Then that will automatically attract the sort of client that you want. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're going to do eight videos. This is the cool bit. So it only takes two hours to shoot these videos. We usually just ask them a series of questions for about 10 minutes and that gives us enough content for three minutes. Um, and then I get my team to take that and turn it into eight podcasts. So it's just the sound. And then we get a professional writer, unfortunately in Australia, uh, journalists are not so valued anymore. There's not many jobs out there. So we get these guys to write it. Don't get, don't get your content written in Manila, okay? <laughs> I, I have a service team over there that answers queries online 24 seven, seven days a week. And sometimes things are just lost in translation. Someone said uh, for one of my you know, products, um, I wanna look like Arnie. And uh, the Manila person said, hi, can you please introduce me to Arnie? I'd love to have a chat. So, <laughs> they don't understand Arnie, so that, yeah, I want to look like Arnie, man, I want muscles, not, yeah, who is Arnie? Um, 
So we want to make sure that um, it's professionally written. So these things are not PR articles. They're a narrative of exactly what you said in that video. And the importance of that is remember the bot's going to go look for keywords, look for importance, and see where you are. It, it, it ranks you on a few things, right? So it wants to see that you're everywhere. It wants to see that you um, do different type of kinesthetics, you know, auditory, you cater for everybody, and that you're on multiple channels. And then the other thing that I do is I actually then send those narratives to my design team, and I say, go through the text and find some cool quotes. You know, there's things that are said in there that are gold, right? So we can make those into to quotes for our social. So the stuff in the red is the stuff that we take care of. The stuff in the green is the stuff that you do. So you can then take those videos and you can put them on your website. You can use them in your EDMs or e newsletters. You can um, use them as blogs, all that sort of stuff. So you can use them as many times as you want. Some people use them in their nurture sequences as part of their sales process, okay? What's really cool is that now you're creating up all this content. So we take the video then, and this bit is done in Manila because it's a very boring process and it has to be done manually. So has anyone heard of Hootsuite and all those sorts of things? Unfortunately, Google knows the difference. It knows when you go in and go Poof, and just dump all the content at once and it doesn't value that. So it actually needs to be posted at particular times. Um, and Monty's been twigging this over years to find out exactly to the point where we're not spamming, but it's enough for Google to go, wow, you're, you're the leaders in this. So we take the video and we put them on these channels. Now, if you only have three channels, don't worry. We'll create the other ones for you. You're the admin, we just have access to post. And Steph, who I'm sure has a photographic memory. Steph is over there, she's, she's the other side of the brain for me. Um, she goes through that process of onboarding. It's just once off and she'll find out what do you have, she'll get access to that. What you don't have, she'll create, right? So then we're gonna put them onto all of, the video goes onto all those channels. The podcast goes onto those three ones. Podcast is really underrated, by the way. I swear to God, that, that thing is growing at double the rate of YouTube. So if you're not doing podcasts, you, you should be out there doing it. It's, um, I think that's a, um, a very easy opportunity for us. And then the text gets put on those three platforms, okay? So that's only one video. We've done it four times, remember? And then we've done it eight times. Can you see how we're already getting to 200 pieces of content distributed? Yep. How many people are doing that many distributions? Okay, so it's time to score yourself. I know we haven't known each other long, but I'd like you to be honest on our first date, please. Um, and for anyone who's in EO in the room, that's basically, you know, I think, put ego aside, let's have a look at how we're actually performing. So this is the checklist. So the first one, I want you to rate yourself between one and 10, one being, not so good. Um, we consistently create high quality, so no DIYs with toilets in the background, original content on a weekly or fortnightly basis. I promise I won't share your results. I'm just looking over your shoulder. Oh, 10, well done. It wasn't. Okay, our content is repurposed as audio, video and and articles as well as added to our website and used in our EDMs. We spend so much time creating one piece of content, all the effort's gone in, and we give it one purpose. We can't afford to do that in business, right? We've got to give it spokes, we've got to give it lots of legs, like think of a caterpillar, right? We want to get it out there as much as possible. So, are you doing that? All the content is distributed thoroughly online in a strategic, frequent manner, not all at once. So it, it, it's constantly being drip fed and Google's constantly seeing it. Most importantly, your clients are seeing it, right? And potential clients. Professionals are engaged to ensure our, our content is high quality, produced regularly and on time. The number one thing that I see is people are trying to find marketing grads at the moment. I mean, that's the career to pick if you've got teenagers. 
You can come out of marketing and be green and their salaries has tripled in the last couple of years. And it's simply because businesses know that they need to be doing something. But the problem is, is a green marketing manager does not know how to be a journalist, a video person, a social media expert, and understand Google al algorithms. So don't blame the marketing manager. Everyone always blames the poor person. It's not their fault. They've been set up to fail. Make sure that if you get somebody internally, that it's very clear what their role is and all the analytical stuff is left to the experts, right? Okay. Um, and most of the time, people get the marketing grads in and they just end up assisting the sales team and still nothing ends up happening online. So I actually have a marketing agency and I still outsource it because I need to know that it's done and that somebody is just dedicated to doing that, that role because it's so important. Um, there's a HR agency um, in Brisbane who started this strategy about two or three years ago. Um, and she's everywhere and she's been, it's, we were talking about PR before, she literally has people approaching her now and she's been on um, the morning shows, she's been on TV, national TV a lot, she's got heaps of coverage. So her approach to PR is just to put a lot of stuff out there as the expert and then the TV stations come to her. And she's generated so much, she does exactly this strategy online, 40% of her leads now come from online. It's massive, right? So it's, it's, worth, it's worth doing if you're a services-based business. Okay, our content is narrow in topic, deep in scope. All content adds value and positions us as the experts. All right, so not talking about yourself. So just think of some stuff that you put out there. Okay, we don't do the hard sell or talk about ourselves, but instead we always educate and add value. Some people aren't even writing. I mean, <laughs> oh, well done. Absolutely. Yeah, you know your stuff, right? <laughs> That's why we're in business. <laughs> um, we have um, an online content and distribution plan that is completed six months in advance, including who does what. Would it help if I was to share with you as part of the goodies on email um, the distribution strategy? Yep, when and where, what days, all that stuff? Okay, cool. That was just a complete delegation to you, Steph. Thanks. And the last one, we take advantage of newsjacking. Oh, has anyone heard of this? Okay, this is cool. So, you know when something happens in the press and you see it and you go, oh, I have a real opinion on that. And, you know, I could really comment on that. And then we think about going and getting a press release written and about three days later it's old news, right? You can hijack things. So what's really great, if something comes up in the press, negative or positive, you can, you've got a beautiful suite of, of content there and try and keep your content not so timely so it's not, it doesn't have a, we want to give it a long lifespan, does that make sense? Which is hard for tech. <laughs> um, give it a long lifespan and if something comes up in the news, you can instantly comment straight away. So for instance, Gutsy, um, we're, we're in America, my business partner's moved to America to focus on that business. Recently, Kellogg's, um, Oh, I'm going up there next. Um, recently, Kellogg's bought out a breakfast cereal because we're all about prebiotics, so gut health, right? Uh, Kellogg's has jumped on the bandwagon, of course. They know what's trending. They've seen it's come up. And they've created a breakfast bar that is a gut health-friendly breakfast bar. But what is the worst thing for the gut? Alcohol, obviously, but I'm, there's no way I'm quitting that. Um, sugar is really bad for the gut. Guess what this is packed with? Sugar. Talk about jumping on a bandwagon but not doing your research, which is fantastic because we've done so many videos. Like li We literally started doing all this content saturation six months before we even re released the product in America. Six months. And it's only been out since November. We've picked up over a thousand stores in Australia alone and New Zealand. And we got into CVS in America, 12,000 pharmacies. Do you think that they all know that we're only a year old business from Australia? They have no idea. We look so professional and we look like the gut health experts, right? She is everywhere. And she just got named top 100 most influential people in wellness in LA, our little Aussie. How cool is that? Fake it till you make it, right? Love it. 
So these strategies work, right, to get attention. So when this Kellogg's thing come out, she's like, ah, you know, this is ridiculous, it's counteractive, rah, 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 rah. She had videos and articles on sugar with the gut and, and really deep and narrow one on what to do first thing in the morning, what to put into your belly first thing in the morning. Apparently what I did this morning's not right. You're meant to have water with lemon and then your coffee. It's all right. Um, coffee first. So we had all this content and we literally just started commenting wherever it was. Commenting, 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 commenting. Guess what happened? End of the day, five articles she got run in food magazines. Indie brand questions Kellogg's and their approach to gut health and advises them to think strongly about their sugar content. Fantastic, right? Didn't cost us a cent. But the important thing is, is that you have all this content ready to go. So you can instantly comment. So another one is a cleaning product that's a local here. Uh, there was an incident, unfortunate, where kids were at a zoo and they ride bikes and they had helmets on and it rained and they cleaned the helmets with some chemical that was from overseas, a really dodgy one, and the rain made it all go in their eyes and skin and they all got rushed to hospital, these kids, right? So their cleaning products are um, biodegradable, environmentally friendly, they're good for you, right? So more expensive, obviously, and Australian made. Straight away, we're like, great, we sent out all this content about how this was completely avoidable if they had have used, not cut corners, and used a product that was safe. He had four TV shows turn up today, tonight, and he had interviews all afternoon. So that's what I reckon is the strategy for PR, right? Have your banker stuff. I know I get excited about this stuff, but I love free shit for business. It's fantastic. All right, so how did we score? Anyone get a 10? No. Anyone get over a three on average? Great. You get a prize. But I'm going to check your answers. I'm going to Google you after this. There you go. Thank you. All right, so do we have some work to do? All right. But we're up for it, right? We're small business. We don't need sleep. Awesome. Okay, so I want to give you another example of faking it till you make it. Um, so this product was less than six months old um, when we launched it in Australia, and I went to um, launch it in America. They didn't know that because the amount of stuff that was available on vegan and everything like that that we'd done leading up to it was pretty cool. Uh, we got offered to go in the Oscars gift bags because it turns out a lot of celebrities are vegans. So um, we got in the Oscars gift bags, which was great. They featured this new idea, literally six months after launching, like, hair care. Do you know how hard beauty is as a market? I don't know what I was thinking. I really don't. Someone said once to me nicely, you have lovely hair, and I just took it too far. Um, and then what's really cool is because I had all my videos out there of me talking about air drying your hair and you know, avoiding heat styling and all that sort of stuff. QVC saw me and how I was presentable, heard the accent. Do you know QVC? It's a home shopping network in America, right? $8 billion turnover. It's massive. They sell $10,000 a minute of product. And they have over 15,000 people apply a year to be a product. And they only pick, they have about 40 products that they, they rang, said, would you like to audition? So now I fly to Philly, and I'm on there live on TV, to over 50 million homes, try that for scary, no swearing for half an hour, tell that to a Queenslander. Talk slowly for the people in Boston. It, it's quite interesting, and someone in your ear telling you, because it's real time data, so they know where the sales are coming from, and they fit it into your ear. None of those opportunities would have come up if I wasn't doing all that stuff online. Because I looked the part, they could easily see, hey, she could work, and the timing was great, obviously. So it's no such thing as luck, only preparedness of opportunity. So this is another one where they, they don't have an online shop, but they, they are a product. So these guys didn't even have a Facebook page when I met them. Three brothers, um, German brothers, who are obsessed with um, making wine, which is great. The deep and narrow topics on wine went on forever. 
But what was really cool is we did things like eat, uh, have uh, red wine with your fish. Like they're up for breaking the rules. Um, so what's interesting is that their wine, which is around $50, $15 a bottle, is consumed within two hours at that price point of being purchased. So it's, I know, we're really naughty, aren't we? Um, so the thing was is to remain top of mind with our customers all the time. They can't buy directly. We're sold, you know, they're sold through, I always say we, I love my clients, it's like, um, we're sold through um, BWS and, and all of that. But what's great is we were showing up in people's feeds, so we're top of mind. So even the subconscious was like going in and they went from 12,000 to 16,000 sub blocks a day with no Facebook. And their competitors are spending millions of dollars. That's the number one Sav Blanc on the right. Millions of dollars on ads. And look at their engagement versus ours. Pretty cool, hey? So, so this is the last thing I really want to take you through. Now, this is pretty important. So if you search vegan hair care, you will find us everywhere. Reviews, videos, and paid and organic. Okay, you want to appear on all of them. So the reason that I have a goal in all my businesses is to be on the front page of Google three times. The reason being is one times has a one time click through rate, two times has a three times click through rate. Yep, 3.1, thank you. The point one, like that's a person. Um, and three has a nine times click through rate. Why do you think that is? Kind of gave you the answer before. Dead bodies, very good. Trusted, exactly. Perception too, 97% of reality is perception online. So people go, they're there, they're there, they're there. What's really cool and so naughty is that I pay for these, this one's here. I actually pay for those ones at the top. I bid on my own name, everyone should bid on their own name. I pay for those, but what percentage of people are clicking on the organic? in product, 41, it's close, 47 for B2C. 41% of people are gonna see my ads on Google Shopping and all that and they're still gonna click on the one that cost me no money, right? 41%, so they don't cost me anything. That's fantastic, do you get that? All right, that's, that's like my gold nugget, that's huge. So that's what you wanna do, bid on your own name, have Google Maps, Google Shopping, Google Offers, Reviews, put all that at the top because have you noticed it's getting smaller, the organic section, and then make sure you rank in organic, okay? It's not that hard. It takes about three months, two to three months before you start seeing traction in organic. It's not like pay to play, like, you know, organic takes time to build up because you've got to train the bot to see you all the time, so. Okay, so your checklist. This is what I want you guys to do. Because next time I see you, you're going to tell me that online is now generating 40% of your business. Now, if you are going to get a marketing manager, please don't set them up to fail. Make sure they've got a plan. If, has anyone thought about a marketing person or do you want a marketing template of an Excel document with everything online? Yeah? I've got like a, it's pretty OCD, but it basically sets out social, paid, offers, and it, it runs through all of it and then it tracks it with KPIs, okay? It's a one-page Excel doc, so if that's helpful, cool, I'll include that. Um, produce regular content that's 90% value add, dating, sex, marriage, and following the EAT principle. And then turn that video into podcast and text, all right? Give all your content legs. We want a minimum of six channels. So you saw all those channels that were up before, that's what we need. Aim to be on the front page of Google three times, and I've just told you how to do it twice with paid, fairly inexpensive, and that's what you'll be talking on next time. Um, and we wanna make sure we're on the front page at least once or twice. Aim for organic for reviews and an organic reach post, okay? And videos are great, by the way. You do realize why everyone needs to be doing videos nowadays. You know that we get penalized for stills. So social media channels are trying to create basically YouTube channels, and they're depending on us to create the content. So if you do a video ad, for anyone who does ads, it's a lot less expensive than a still ad. Okay, so they're basically forcing our behavior to create video content for them, because that's what they want their channels to turn into. 
So I don't mind if you DIY some video stuff, but make it your live videos. I don't mind if they're a little bit more off the cuff, but they're live, so they're expected to be. Everything else, make sure it's good quality. So that's why you have to be do, doing video. Everyone knows they need to be doing video, but that's actually the reason why, and it's only going to get worse, which is great because a lot of the majors are spending $20,000 per production, so we're not. So we can get ahead of the game. And online is ongoing, unfortunately. So uh, we had a lady who um, sold bee soap or something, was it? Shampoo. Shampoo and all sorts of things. Not vegan, but um, so she was, she's quite old too. She was about 65. There you go. She's been doing this stuff forever. She could talk about bees and beauty forever. And um, she's so skeptical. Said, all right, just do your thing. And she created videos and she got inundated. She was getting all this PR, all these leads. It was the busiest she'd ever been, the most sales she'd ever done in her life, which is fantastic. And it was only two months in, wasn't it? It's really good. But then she rang us at Christmas and said, oh my God, I'm so exhausted from all this business you've sent me. Like, what a problem to have. Um, please put my, my stuff on hold. And we were like, be careful. We've taken the time and the effort to get you onto the front page. And over, what do you think happened? The bot was like, oh, she's not there anymore. Great, she's old school. She was great. She rang and she said, oh shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> turn it on, turn it on. So, but it's not as simple as turning your ads back on, right? We have to build it back up again. So just make sure that you're constantly doing it. Unfortunately, it's a beast you need to keep feeding. And for anyone who wants to exit their business, which I think we should all have as a strategy, w whether we exercise that option or not, it just makes you build a business that doesn't depend on you and, a, and I think a better structured business. Um, if you want an exit, brand equity is massive. Every one of my businesses, brand equity has been one of the big things that they look at. So how you're perceived in the market, all that sort of stuff is really important. So don't underestimate the extra value you can get on exit if you do this stuff right. All right. So these are the packages. So um, basically uh, how it works is you get all your videos. So four videos a quarter. Uh, you get the videos. You get the repurposing to the podcast and the text and you get all the distribution, we take care of all of it for you for an ongoing monthly amount. And to be honest, it took us a while to get it to that point, like it, we've really had to systemise it because of the fact that most videos cost you more to produce, just one video to do that. So, but we want to make sure that you guys can afford to do this strategy on an ongoing basis without it costing you five grand per video. So that's for everything included. Um, the difference between the middle one and the last one is the blue one is without cutaways. So does everyone know what cutaways are on videos? So um, for instance, Techwell, um, when we were interviewing them on EMBN, they're experts, but cutaways would, isn't really relevant. Like what are we going to show, some cable in the ground or... We probably could have, but you know, I don't really feel like getting dirty. Um, so whereas if you were somebody who was selling, say, hair care, you don't just want to hear someone talking about hair care, right? You want to see how you can apply it. You want to see the results afterwards. Any sort of product, I tend to find that people want to be able to see how it works, right? So I usually say if you're in services, you don't need the cutaways. Cutaways take a bit more effort, as you can imagine, um, because, you know, it's about an extra two or three hours of filming just to show those extra pieces so that while you're talking about it, um, and when we're interviewing you, I'm making notes on all oh, that'll make a great cutaway so we can actually show that. Software is another one. You know, if you're talking about the software, it's good to show the screen of, okay, this is how this app works, this is how you log in, all those sorts of, this is the application. So, does that make sense? Great. All right. So, um, that's pretty much me. So, if you're interested in um, the package, um, where's our Techwell people? Right. I love the fact that they all stood up because we didn't have enough seats. Thanks, guys. I do ramble, don't you? They're like, when is she going to shut up so I can sit down? Um, so if you want to um, go ahead with one of those packages, the next step is to see one of the Techwell guys and they'll set up a time with me. So this has all been about the strategy. The next step is for me to understand your business in a little bit more detail than what we went through. So I, we need to do some research on who your competitors are. 
uh, what you're trying to rank for with, um, so that we can make sure we control the bot and then looking for those deep and narrow. So we come up with a strategy in that hour with me on how to do that for you. And then we basically book in, you see us every quarter. Me and Emmett turn up and uh, we will do your interviews and we don't bite. Um, and I'll probably send you some examples of the sort of quality that you can expect. They're really, really great. Um, and, and then you just see us every quarter. So the next steps is talk to those guys and then we'll organise a conference call with myself um, to talk about your business. Um, if the audit, for the IT audit, strongly recommend that. I actually like to get my business audited every 12 months just to see where they can look for ways. So my thing is always to them, find out how my IT upgrade can have a return on investment. So I make sure they do that for me. Now the next uh, event is on um, the other side of the brain, which is the Google paid stuff. So um, I might just quickly introduce you to Monty and he can take you through the sorts of things that you'll be covering off there. Is that of interest to you guys? Because this is being put on to benefit you guys. So are you interested in paid? Because if not, I'll sack him. It's fine. Yep, paid. Good. All right. Because we want that trifecta, right? You've got the organic strategy now. Now we want to figure out how to do the paid. So do you want to quickly say something about what, what you'll be talking about? And I'm hanging around, so stay and network. I had a look at you guys. There's some pretty cool people in the room. So let's all stay and meet and greet afterwards. Sound good? Great. Thanks for your time.